What's up guys, Filterless here. In this video, we're gonna be running multiple tests to find the best settings to help you get the most battery life out of your ROG Ally. As always, there's gonna be timestamps down below so you can jump to any section that interests you. However, the first test we're going to be running is probably one of the most important findings. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up as it helps the video reach more people who have an Ally to help them figure out the best settings as well. Jumping into the first test, I'm using my camera to film the device. It's running on battery, nothing's plugged into it, so we can get the most accurate result. This is at 1080p 60 hertz in performance mode. The main point of this test is I was wanting to see the power draw of the system in light workloads like watching YouTube or if it's sitting idle like we're seeing here on the desktop. I let each of these tests run for three minutes each to make sure the wattage balances out. And as you can see on the left, we're using around 6.7 watts of power. And then on the right, we're at about 12.4 watts. And the only difference here is CPU boost is disabled on the left and it's enabled on the right. I actually didn't think it'd be this big of a power draw difference myself, but going from 6.7 to 12.4 watts is roughly 85% more power usage. So this would affect any time you have the device sitting in between playing a game or you just boot it up and it's sitting idle for a few minutes. This is the kind of extra draw you'll get if you have boost on. Now moving on to YouTube, I wanted to freeze it right here for a second. Just show you all we're at 7.8 versus 12.8 and now it's playing and the watts will vary. It really just depends. Sometimes they'll go up and down, but on average it was about 7.8 versus 12.8. And that might not seem like a whole lot, but that is about 64% increase in power usage if you're just using your device to sit and watch videos. So quite a bit of extra drain, considering the only difference is we have CPU boost disabled on the left versus it being enabled on the right. For this next test, the brightness is the same. However, the contrast is slightly different between the two. So while the image does look different, this is still at 30% brightness, no change between them. And here's a test you usually use to test for ghosting on monitors. However, this will keep the display running at the max refresh rate at both 60 and 120 hertz on the right. This is with CPU boost on on both. And as you can see on the left at 60 hertz, we're at about 12 watts. And off to the right, we're at about 16.5 watts. Here we're running the exact same test again. 60 hertz on the left, 120 hertz on the right. But we've turned CPU boost off. Now we're at about 7 watts on the left versus 9.3 on the right. So quite a bit of savings there. And just for fun, I went ahead and threw 120 hertz up on both. On the left, we're at 9.2 watts. On the right, about 16.6. And the only difference is CPU boost is disabled on the left. And that might not seem like a whole lot, but that's about an 80% increase in power. And before starting the next test, I wanted to show you all the power difference between 60 hertz display refresh rate and 120 hertz when we're capping it at 40 FPS. So on the left, we have 60 hertz running right now. And if you look on the right, we're at 120 hertz in the game. And we're also at 120 hertz in armory crate. And here's after letting it sit for a little while to kind of level off. You can see we're at 14.8 on the left and 14.86 on the right. So very close, basically no difference. And at 40 FPS, we are below the actual free sync range, which starts from 48 hertz up to 120 hertz on the Ally or 144 hertz on other displays. So this is using something called low frame compensation. And basically the display should be running at 80 hertz on the right, even though we're at a 40 FPS limiting game. So it eliminates tearing. The key takeaway here is 120 hertz is always worth having on when you're playing games for that free sync experience. From my test, there's almost no noticeable power draw difference between running it at 60 versus 120 hertz. And on this test where we're capping it at 40, I didn't see any difference. And when you're below 60, you want it to reduce the tearing as well as being above 60. So it's something you can just leave on and not worry about too much as far as battery. Enjoy the 120 hertz, there's basically no difference. 
And going forward with the test, since we're trying to save battery, we're going to be using 40 FPS cap in most games. And I wanted to show how close the power difference is between 30% brightness on the ROG Ally, which you're seeing on the right, versus it being plugged in with a single USB-C to HDMI cable. So not a dock, just that one cable. There's a very small power difference. You can see we're actually saving about 0.4 watts on the left, which is it plugged into the monitor. You can see it's a lot clearer versus on the right, we're at 6.73. Since it's such a small power difference, I decided to run all the tests going forward using the monitor since it's easier for y'all to see the gameplay as well as the numbers. And we're going to be below 40, so we're not gonna be utilizing the 120 Hertz just keep in mind, if you are running on the ROG Ally display, this was at 30% brightness. So if you go to 50 plus, you're gonna be using a bit more wattage than what you're seeing here, but not a whole lot. Moving on to Dirt Rally 2.0, we're running 720p medium preset with a 40 FPS cap. In this first test, we have CPU boost disabled on the left. We have it enabled on the right. And you can see we're at about 22.5 on the left versus 25.7 on the right. And wrapping this benchmark up, we're at about 21 on the left versus 25 watts on the right. Next up, we have an 11 watt limit on the left versus auto TDP on the right. And one thing to pay attention to would be the frame time graph. As you can see, it's much more unstable off on the right side. There's these very big bumps in it, which causes it to slow down and speed up. And even nearing the end of the benchmark, you can see the mountains off on the right. That's very, you can see the game speeding up and slowing down if you pay attention. It's a bit of a jarring experience. However, ending this benchmark, we're at about 18.2 watts on the left and 18.2 on the right. Very close between 11 watt limit on the left and auto TDP running on the right at 40 FPS. And the last thing I wanted to point out was we are at 41 average on the left versus 30 for the 1%, 24 for the point ones, And we're getting 43 off on the right with the 1% at 25 and 0.1s at 21. So that's pretty close. And you can see on the left, just slightly more stable FPS. Moving on to Crisis, same thing as before. We have boost off on the left versus on on the right. This is at 720p with the medium preset. And kicking things off, we're at about 23.2 watts on the left versus 34.8 watts on the right. And at the end of the test, we're at about 23.8 on the left, 36 on the right. You can see we got 40, 40 and 40 for the average 1%, 0.1% lows on the left versus 40, 40 and 30. We got slight little stutters on the right with CPU boost on, but overall pretty close. Jumping on to the next test, I found 11 watts on the left got us the closest to that 40 FPS target. And we have auto TDP running on the right, trying to maintain 40 FPS. As you can see, we're very close in that watt usage between the two, as well as even the averages, the 1% and 0.1% are all pretty close. At the end of this test, we're at about 18 watts on the left and 18.2 watts on the right. So extremely close power draw numbers. And on the left, we got 41, 30, 26 for that average 1%, 0.1%. And on the right, we got 40, 28, and 22. Moving on to Horizon 5, once again, boost off on the left, boost on on the right. This is at 720p medium preset. And here, just getting into the benchmark, we're at about 23.6 watts on the left, 36.4 on the right, and we're maintaining that solid 40 across the board on both. In wrapping this benchmark up, we're at about 23 watts on the left, or 22.2 now, and about 34 watts on the right, and we maintained a solid 40 for the averages, 1% and 0.1%. Jumping straight into the 11 watt limit on the left versus auto TDP on the right. The 11 watts on the left got us closest to that 40, but it is going to be a little bit above. And if you look at the frame time graph on the right, it's a bit more unstable and wavy as you'll see, especially when going around corners. So it's somewhat slowing down and speeding up over and over again. And we're really close in wattage, about 19 watts on the left, 18.6 on the right. And I wanted to quickly full screen this here to see if you are seeing the speed up and slow down right here. So if you look off to the right or left or even at the game, you'll see how it's slowing down and speeding up over and over. Hopefully that's noticeable. It might be kind of hard to tell with the recording. 
and wrapping this benchmark up we're at about 19.1 on the left 18.3 on the right we got 47 33 29 41 27 21 on the right so slightly more stable and higher fps on the left however we are using more wattage next up we have skyrim same as before boost on on the right versus boost off on the left and we're running 720p high settings here and right now we're getting around 23.8 watt usage on the left versus 31.8 on the right. And we are holding that solid 40 across the board. And then wrapping this one up, we're at about 23.4 watts on the left, 30.3 on the right. And we pretty much got a solid 40 FPS on the right. We got little stutter. You can see it in the frame time right here. If you look to the right, it, it does stutter a little more with CPU boost on here and there, but it's very minor. So it's showing 39 for those point ones. All right, next up, we have a 12 watt limit on the left. So we had to go from 11 like we just had before in Horizon 5 and go to 12 to be able to get around 40 FPS in Skyrim. And on the right, we have auto TDP running. You can see the wattages are really close right now at about 17.9 versus 18.3. And wrapping this benchmark up on both, we're at about 17.9 on the left versus 18.4 off to the right. Our FPS on the left is about 42, 30, 26 versus 41, 28, 24 on the right. And if you look at the frame time graph on the right versus left, I want y'all to just pay attention to that. It is much more wavy. It's slowing down, speeding up. In fact, I decided to go ahead and just make this full screen. This might even be a better example than in Horizon 5. If you look at the water and how it's moving left to right, that should be traveling at the exact same speed. However, if you look at it closely, it's somewhat slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up. And that's what the game is doing. And that's auto TDP. If you look at that frame time graph, it keeps slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up. Now for the last test and most demanding game we've tested so far, we have Cyberpunk. For this, I had to drop the FPS limit down from 40 FPS to 35 FPS. And starting the test, we have CPU boost off on the left and CPU boost on on the right. And with this more demanding title, you can see we're at about 42.8 on the left versus 43.7 on the right. So very close in wattages. We ended with a solid 35 FPS on both and about one watt difference between the two. So not much savings with boost on versus off. Moving on to this test, I found this to be the most interesting. We were able to go all the way down to 16 watts on the left to get around 35 FPS. That is a huge savings. And then auto TDP on the right is also a really big savings. And you can see we're at about 25.7 watts on the left versus 28 on the right, but it's still kind of balancing out. In these much more demanding titles, you can see the frame time is close. I would say it's still slightly more unstable on the right, but much closer. In wrapping this one up, we're at about 25.7 on the left and 25.5 on the right. We got 36, 27, 23 for those FPS on the left versus 35, 28, and 26 on the right. All right, moving on to the tutorial part of the video. If you already know what you're doing, then you can skip ahead to the charts. However, if you're uncertain how to set the watt limit or or disable CPU boost, this section is for you. To start, the easiest way to limit the watts is to open up Armory Crate, and up at the top, you're gonna go to Settings, then this Operating Mode right here, and this is where you have your silent performance turbo profiles. You're going to click on manual. And then what you want to do if you're trying to save battery is create a new profile and you can rename it to whatever you like. We'll just call this 12 watt here. So I'm going to rename that. I'm going to drop this top slider down to 15, which will move all of them to 15. And then the SPL is the sustained power limit on the APU and you're going to set that to 12. Down here on the fans, you just want to use the default level three fan profile. You can drag these around if you want, but it's already at the minimums and the temperatures are going to be so low. It makes no sense to even drag them around. It doesn't really matter that much. The only thing you could do is drag this slider as far over as you possibly can, and it will barely reduce it if you want to. However, I just run level three defaults and temperature is not gonna be an issue. Then you click on check here for apply, click on yes. And now you have a 12 watt profile. So you can just switch between them whenever you want. So what you might wanna do is go ahead and make a 13 one by clicking create new again, and then dragging them down 
go ahead and create a 13 and you can rename it to 13 watts. Then you'll be able to just instantly switch between the profiles whenever you want and click the checkbox to switch between them. One thing to note, I just started up a game. There's gonna be this two minute boost at 15 watts. So for two minutes, it will use 15 watts. So if we switch over to Dirt Rally here, you will see we're at about 15 watts right now, even though we have that set down to 12 watts. And this will be for two minutes and that will automatically drop down to your 12 watt limit or whatever limit you have set on that far left slider. The next method you can use to limit watts immediately is an app called Handheld Companion. However, there's weird controller issues that I've run into right now where if you restart the device, your controller will not show up at all. Even in Windows under USB game controllers until you start it up, it connects and then you exit out of it. So it's a little finicky, but I still want to show you there will be tutorials online for this. If it's something you want to use, I would recommend waiting till there's a bit more updates and bug fixes. And once that happens, I'm planning on doing a video on this. And when you start up Handheld Companion, you can go to Profiles here, Power Settings and you can set this TDP right here. Also, another thing you can do under hotkeys, I have it set up to be able to pull up this quick bar menu if I hold right on the D-pad. You can see this side menu pops up, and from here, you can toggle settings on and off as well. And another thing I have set up is if I long press on the D-pad down, it lowers the watts. So if I just keep pressing down on the D-pad, it's going to keep lowering that down, even if the menu's not open. I just down pressed again. You can see it triggering that shortcut. And if we open that back up, now we're at 23. It's an easy way to immediately adjust TDP in games. And there's one really cool feature I like. Also, here's automatic TDP that we're running before. You can see it's going to disable that as well as the frame limit because you set the FPS limit in here. So if you want to try that out, you can do that as well. Like I said, I'm planning on making a video on this, but I think it's probably worth waiting to fix some of the bugs. I'll show you a quick example. So if we decide to just sign out or restart the computer right now, let me show you. Here we are signing back in. So as you can see here, we're signing back in. I'm connected to the monitor here and we have no controls at all. So nothing will work. And if we pull up USB game controllers, it's not in here at all. We don't have handheld companion running. So if you were to uninstall the program right now, basically you would not have a functioning controller. There might be a way to fix it, trying to uninstall the driver or some other method, but you lose access to your controls. So for some people, they might not realize it was actually handheld companion because they restarted it and it's not open. So that's just one issue. And to fix that, you need to open it back up and wait a minute and then it will reconnect to the controls. There we go. So now we have access to the controls again. They're working. Also, if you use an external controller in dock mode, sometimes when you go to hit the Xbox button on the controller, it will just turn on and then immediately turn your controller off over and over and over again. And you need to basically close out of it, reopen it, try to figure out what's going on. So there's a few glitches that are extremely annoying to me because I use dock mode with the Xbox controller. Also, if you do decide to disconnect, what will happen is when it's in this disconnected mode, you'll lose access to your controller again. And if you close out of this program, you still won't have access. So you have to make sure it's connected and then click the X up here for each one like this to get them to reconnect. And it takes a second, all right? And you'll see it actually didn't reconnect that time. So we have to open it back up. So here we go. Now the controller is in here. So we'll go ahead and try to exit one more time. All right, there, now we have the controller. There we go. Sometimes you'll even see the controller in here and for whatever reason, it won't be working. Like I said, use the program at your own risk. It's not something I currently recommend to most people and I'm not gonna be doing a tutorial on it. There'll be other tutorials out there. I will do a video on it once it becomes slightly more stable. And the last thing I wanted to mention to be able to disable CPU boost and power settings, I'll have a tutorial link down below. It's a little bit lengthy, so I'm not gonna include it in this video, but in the description, you will see see a link to a video that will show you in depth how to get this option activated. All right, and moving on to the charts. If you were to do light usage, so watching videos, having it be idle, whatever the case may be, very light tests, it's going to be around 12.7 with boost enabled at 60 hertz, just idle versus 7.2 watts. So that is a huge amount of savings just sitting on the desktop and doing nothing else. And then if you're running 120 hertz, it becomes even more apparent. You can see we go from 12.7 to 15.7 watts just sitting on the desktop 
or when we have it off, we're at 8.4. Something important to note, this is 7.2 total system draw. So if you use Armory Crate, it only lets you go to a 7 watt APU limit and you will be drawing much more than this, probably somewhere in between. So the only way to get down to the 4 watts on the APU that we saw was to disable CPU boost as you cannot even limit it down that low for the APU. Then for the UFO test, maxing the display out at 120 hertz, we're at 16.5 with boost on for the wattage versus 9.1 with it off. Playing a YouTube video at 60 hertz refresh rate, we're at about 13.7 versus 8.3. We also did a test of 120 hertz versus 60 and it was like a 0.4.3 watt difference, so not enough to worry about. I say leave it in 120 most of the time and if you are going to be watching a movie or something a lot longer go ahead and knock it to 60 you can get a little extra savings but turning boost off is going to be massive for you if you are watching any type of media moving on to dirt rally as you saw in the video earlier when we were at 120 hertz versus 60 hertz at a 40 fps cap like you're seeing here there's basically no difference so you can just leave it on 120 and enjoy playing the game so this is when we were driving around we had boost on versus boost off and the difference here is 25 watts going down to 21 watts with boost off and we maintain that solid 40 across the board. When we did auto TDP versus the 11 watt manual limit down here, you can see very close in the wattages, right at 18 or so for both. And we were at 43 for the average on auto TDP versus 42 with the 11 watt limit. But our 1% jump from 25 to 31 and the 0.1% jump from 22 to about 28 using the manual 11 watt limit. Jumping over to Crisis, this really ate a lot of power when we had boost on at 36.2. Turning boost off, we dropped down to right at 23.8. You can see we are 0.1%. Actually, there was a little bit of stuttering throughout the gameplay having CPU boost on. So slightly less stable, but not enough to even drop our 1% averages. And then with it off, we maintain that solid 40, but this is a huge power saving going from 36 to basically 24. And then we have auto TDP and 11 watt limit down here as well. And you can see really similar, we're at about 18 watts total between both of these. And then our averages were at 40 versus 41. 1% lows were 28 versus 30. And then our point ones were 22 to 26. So once again, if we go back to Dirt Rally, you can see these increased a bit more. However, even on Crisis, we also got that slight increase in stability. Moving on to Horizon 5, we're at 35.2 with boost on versus 22.3 with it off. That's a huge difference, and we maintain a solid 40 on both here. And Auto TDP versus the 11 watt limit was very close in the averages as well as wattage. So we're at about 18.3 and a little bit more here at 19.1 with the 11 watt limit, but 47 for our averages. And and then once again, the 1% 27 to 33, the 0.1s 21 to 29. So we just saw Dirt Rally on Crisis and on Horizon 5, slightly more stable frame rate, usually at similar wattage, but just a little bit extra here. And moving on to Skyrim with CPU boost on, we're at about 30.3 versus 23.6 with boost off for the wattages. And we got almost a solid 40 with boost on, a little stutter here and there that caused the 0.1% to to drop some, not something you'd probably notice in the game at all. And then with it off, we maintain 40 across the board. Then moving on to auto TDP versus our 12 watt limit, very close. Auto TDP was actually using slightly more wattage at 18.5 versus 18. This can vary back and forth. So really close, about 18 watts on both. Our averages on auto TDP, we're at 41 versus 42. 28 to 30 and 24 to 26. So not near as much of a jump as we saw in the other games on these lower 1% and 0.1%, but still just a slight bump. And then moving on to Cyberpunk, it really didn't matter whether we have CPU boost on or off in a demanding title like this. You can see we're at 43.7 with it on versus 42.6 with it off. However, we maintain that solid 35 in either one. And then moving on to auto TDP versus our 16 watt limit, very close in power usage, right at 25 and a half on both. 
we got 36 with auto TDP versus 35 for the average. And our 1% went from 27 to 28. The 0.1s 23 to 26. So pretty close, but a slight bump, just like we saw in Crisis, Horizon 5, and Skyrim. So now you're probably wondering what settings do I recommend? And I'd say for most people, it's what you're seeing in the background, either a 12 watt limit like we're seeing on the left or a 13 watt limit like you're seeing on the right. As you saw a few moments ago, this can be done in Armory Crate as well as some other apps. But if you want to make it easy, you can just do this in Armory Crate under manual mode. This will make it where you get consistent battery across all the games you play since you're locking the watts. So it's not going to vary where a certain game will drain it really fast. And if a game's not performing well, you can just adjust settings. And the settings I personally run and recommend when you're trying to save battery is 120 hertz. 720p and radon image sharpening. As we saw earlier, 120 hertz really doesn't use any more power, especially at the lower frame rate, and you really just want to leave it on. There's not much power to be saved by turning it off. And radon image sharpening is awesome. It basically sharpens up your image to make it look somewhere in between 720p to 1080p, leaning more towards 1080p in clarity. There's also zero performance hit using RIS. And the main reason I recommend using 720p is you greatly reduce the resources you you need to run games so you can lower the wattage down to a level where you get good battery life it would be very hard to do that at 1080p and i personally do limit the watts to 12 or 13 if i'm using a watt limit However, if you prefer a stable FPS experience, then I would recommend using an FPS cap at around 40, maybe even 45 with CPU boost off. As you saw in the charts, you can get a very good 1% average and even 0.1% frame rate, almost perfectly solid doing that. You will be using more power, but you're also getting butter smooth gameplay. And the program I recommend for limiting the FPS is Riva Tuner. It comes with a program called MSI Afterburner. You can also download it as a standalone. I don't currently have a tutorial on how to install and set that program up, but it's very popular. There are numerous videos on YouTube. MSI Afterburner has been around since before I can remember numerous years. I trust the program and use it all the time. In fact, it is the program that you're seeing right now that's calculating VRAM, FPS average, 1% and 0.1% lows. And the FPS cap is actually my preferred method with CPU boost disabled. It's just I like the butter smooth experience, the slight jitters you get when lowering the wattage and having the fluctuations kind of makes me nauseous sometimes. For most people, though, I doubt you would notice it. And I say try limiting the watts as you'll save the most amount of power. And if it doesn't bug you, that is a great way to get better battery life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, got some value from it. If you want to support the channel, consider hitting the like button, sub button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.